Finally tonight, some sad news. Known to her legions of fans all over the world as the queen of suspense, novelist Mary Higgins Clark passed away on January 31st. She was 92 years old. She was a New York Times bestseller, a legend in the publishing world. Since her first novel, Where Are the Children, was published in 1975, she sold hundreds of millions of books all over the world. I sat down with Mary in 2013 at her home in New Jersey to talk about her amazing life, her writing process, and the faith that fueled it all. Here's my interview with the late, great Mary Higgins Clark. You've been doing this for 40 years, 40 plus years. How do you keep in touch with that audience and describe that audience for me, if you would? Who is well, the Mary Higgins Clark reader? Well, she can be anyone or he. Mm -hmm. I think I'm primarily a woman's uh, author. Mm -hmm. But because I don't use explicit sex or violence, mm -hmm. I can be age 13. Yeah. The teachers put me on the list at age, at age 12. Mm -hmm. Because the kids are not, well, now, of course, the young adults are getting much more sophisticated, yeah. much racier, even, mm -hmm. if you want to use that word. But, I mean, all these years, the teachers and the mothers knew they would never be object to a book. They didn't have to read it mm -hmm. before giving it uh, to a young person. Yeah. And I always loved the Hitchcock way of telling a story. Mm -hmm. Footsteps on the stairs. Mm -hmm. You're alone in the house. Yeah. You've locked the bedroom door. Mm -hmm. You know that there is a serial killer in the neighborhood. The police have warned everyone. Mm -hmm. The handle of the door turns. And even though it's locked, it starts to open. You reach for your cell phone and it slides out of your hand. Mm -hmm. I want that kind of writing mm -hmm. as opposed to he shot her in one eye to see the expression in the other. <laughs> yeah, well, <that's... laughs> Which is one of the great lines. Mickey's Blaine. Yeah, it's a great, great line. It is a great line, but it's not Mary Higgins but Clark. But it's not Mary Higgins Clark. Yeah. And it's not tearing the clothes off. Mm -hmm. is, that a, is that a choice both artistic and moral, personal for you? It was natural. It's not something that I thought about. Mm -hmm. It was a natural choice for me to go that way. And it's not that I criticize racy books mm -hmm. or, or uh, violent action books mm -hmm. by any stretch, but it's not my way of telling the story. I want to go back a little bit because in all your books, bad things happen to really nice people. Which happens all the time. You're, you're, you bet. And your life has not been untouched by tragedy and loss. You lost your father when you were not even 11. Do you know it's 74 years ago yesterday, and wow. you never forget it? Hmm. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. That day is as clear in my head as, hmm. as though it was yesterday. Wow. How did, you you learn, how did you learn that he had died? I came home a nice Catholic girl from Sunday ma from Saturday Mass in the month of May, uh -huh. and the police cars were around the house. Uh, wow. And then you lose your husband. You have five children. He was with you for 17 years? No, 14, 14 years, years and nine months. Wow. And that's going on 50 years. Can you imagine? But what, how, do you, how do you deal with that? And tell me for a moment how your faith helped you through that moment. Here's a woman. Suddenly your husband's gone. You've got five children that you not only have to raise, you have to feed and educate. A heavy burden for a woman, particularly at that time in history. Well, the point is, I loved having five. I wasn't even sh sure whether I might be pregnant. And I always said, I miss Michael. <laughs> 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 I wasn't, but mm -hmm. I, for a few months, I simply wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. And I thought I could handle six as well as five. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you're in your early 30s, mm -hmm. everything is possible. Now mm -hmm. when I see the young girls with one kid running this way and one the other. And I think, how in the name of God did they do it? And I thought, we all did it. Yep. We all had a second car that was absolutely useless. <laughs> we had a two-door car, and one door didn't open. Uh -huh. The only door that opened was the driver's door, which meant you had to leave the kids out in the middle of the street half the time. <laughs> 
We didn't think anything of it. Hmm. We were all young and broke, but everybody was smart and everybody was becoming. Hmm. And you, how do you hold a job, raise five children, and find time in the mornings to write, Mary? Well, the, the, the thing is, it's really not remarkable. How many people get up and do yoga at five? Well. <laughs> you know, think about it. Yeah. Or go yeah. for a swim in the gym. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of that, I got up at five, and I wrote till quarter of seven. Hmm. Then got the kids up, and I always fed them, and it wasn't things you pop in the toaster. No, you had to actually you, cook. You really made things mm -hmm. for them. And a quarter of eight, the uh, carpool came, you know, and then they were off to the school buses, and then the carpool came. Hmm. And it was a joke that I wrote in with my brother-in-law and one of the men in town, and they said it was indecent to look in the back seat of the car because I was literally getting dressed. <laughs> my dress was unzipped. <laughs> I was carrying stockings and shoes. <laughs> the curls were in my hair. <laughs> my friend, whose husband drove, said, Mary, what, what, what color rollers are you using in your hair this week? I just found pink ones in my car. Are you sure they're yours? <laughs> I said, yeah, it's pink rollers this week. She said, OK, I don't have to worry. <laughs> now, did you always know you were going to be successful, even during that period? I always knew. I never dreamt I'd be this successful. Of mm -hmm. course, I didn't dream that. That's just incredible. Mm -hmm. But uh, I knew I was going to make it. After school, I went, took the subway to downtown. First the elevated, and then I began mm -hmm. the subway. And I worked at the Hotel Shelton mm -hmm. as a telephone operator mm -hmm. from 4 until 7, three nights a week and weekends. And if I got down early enough, I would go walk over to Fifth Avenue, that's on Lexington Avenue, mm -hmm. and walk past Tailored Women, Tailored Woman and Sacks and Depinners and pick out the clothes that I would have when I was a successful writer. Mm. Is that bound up somehow in your faith, in your sense of hope, that sort of God had a plan for Mary Higgins Clark? Well, I don't know how anybody can live without faith. I just don't. Mm -hmm. I have been a devout Catholic all these years, and uh, happily so. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think when you really get these curves, mm -hmm. it would be so easy to despair. Mm -hmm. You look fantastic. You are obviously Good makeup active. Love. No, it's not that. <laughs> and your mind is so active. Is this work part of the secret of keeping oh, you so active? Oh, I think active? so. I think so. Mm -hmm. I would not want to uh, be just sitting home, even reading a book, when, and I love to read, mm -hmm. or getting hooked on television shows. And, yeah. and I like some shows very much, and mm -hmm. uh, some of them are really excellent. Yeah. But that would not be for me. I enjoy. I mean, tonight I'm going to our writers group, and it's Susan Isaacs, Nelson DeMille, Harlan Coben, we have such a Linda Fairstein. Wow. You're slumming them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have such a good time together. And what do you all do with these? You read work? You read work? Oh, no, no. On? We just hang out. Just hang out and gossip. In the beginning, we used to talk about what we were doing, but then we said, no, let's not do that. Let's just hang out. Oh, how nice. But one, the first Tuesday of every month. Mm. And there'll be anywhere from five to ten of us there, depending on on, you know, who's out of town, sure. who's peddling books. Wow, uh, it's fantastic. But it's great fun to do uh, it. It sounds, it sounds it. I want to talk about the way I see your faith in these books, and every one of them, almost to a character. Your heroine is an Irish Catholic girl. Somebody well, who, I know her. You know, you know this woman. And it, but it's beautiful the way you work in the sacraments. Here you have the sacrament of the sick being administered, and, and things happen when she's on her way to daily mass. Um, I, I was flipping back through our library. Where are, the, where are you now? Dealt with post-abortive trauma, a woman who's had an abortion. Tell me about that and why you decided to work that in. Very rarely is that topic, the mm -hmm. after effects of abortion tackled Did she fiction. actually have it or did she have the baby? She had the baby. That's but, what I thought. Right, but someone she, else had it and she was, she was de she, I think she was reflecting on others who had gone through with an abortion. Isn't that in, well, of course, I'm so, uh, uh, I cannot even imagine discussing that I, 
there would be any ambivalence mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. about the way I feel about it. But uh, the, the values, the moral values are there in the mm -hmm. book. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't see them closing the door and then uh, you don't go into the bedroom with people. Right. But I have always felt the sexiest line written in the 20th century was in Gone with the Wind. You'll not shut me out of your bedroom tonight, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Uh, but that's a lot sexier mm -hmm. than uh, description. Gratuitous, yeah. Gratuitous. It's, mm -hmm. it's infinitely more. In the same sense, Hitchcock, psycho, that mm. the shower scene is the scariest scene with all that they can do with pyrotechnics techniques or whatever the blazes it is, sure. that's the scariest 14 seconds ever recorded. Yeah. yeah. You never, you see her silhouette, but you don't see her naked body. Mm -hmm. You see the knife going, mm -hmm. but you never see her stabbed. Yeah. And then you see water and blood running down. Mm -hmm. And people still scream when they see that. Yeah. So I've always wanted to write like that. Mm -hmm and feel as though I can scare people. One woman ran into me in the hairdresser last week and she said, I read Where Are the Children? Oh. And she said, it frightened me to death. I have never read another one of your books. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, there are 30, 41 more, give it a try. Yeah, that's right, try, try your luck at it. You might like one of them. That's a great book though, and it is terrifying though for parents, it's terrifying. The, I, last year, I think you came out with the book, The Lost Years, which was about a letter Jesus wrote to Joseph of Arimathea. Right. That was sort of the central axis upon which right. the story spun. Tell me where that came from, the idea for that story. The idea came from Michael Gorda, mm -hmm. my editor of all these years. Sure. And a legend and, in, in the trade. And uh, we discuss a plot, I might say, Michael, I have the best idea. Yeah. Or he might say, Mary, I was thinking. Hmm. as he did last year, to have a biblical reference in your book. Say a letter that Christ wrote to someone. I said, Michael, in a suspense novel, I said, that could be, <laughs> it could be sacrilegious, uh, irreverent. Mm -hmm. But I kept coming back to it. Oh. And I thought, well, Jesus was a Jewish boy who went to temple three times a day. Hmm. At 12, he was teaching the elders in the temple and discussing the scriptures, which he had clearly read and understood mm -hmm. with them. And I, Joseph of Arimathea had the tomb where he was buried. And on Palm Sunday, one of the Psalms is, Joseph of Arimathea, a good and just man, and a secret disciple of Christ, had the courage to go to Pontius Pilate and request the body. The body. And I thought Christ would have anticipated that. Mm -hmm. I can assume that Joseph was at the temple at Passover when Jesus was 12. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, it was only 21 years later. Right, right. And might have recognized that he had seen the Messiah mm -hmm. because when at the circumcision, uh, two people recognized that Two old people. Right, that he was. The I can Messiah. die now. I have seen the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So Joseph could have overheard. Mm -hmm. Thy father, my, thy father and I have sought thee somewhere away. Mm. So I thought you could do that, without it being sacrilegious. Yeah. And you did. You pulled it off. I, I felt that it was okay. Mm -hmm. How do you want people to remember you, as a woman and as a writer? As a good storyteller. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as a as a good friend. Well, you've certainly been that, I know, to a number of people, not only here, but all across the country and the world. Before we go, one of the things I loved most about Mary was her mischievous sense of humor. She offered me a little counsel during the first interview I did with her about how she came up with certain characters for her work, and she gave me this advice. I am told you occasionally off your enemies in your books. <laughs> Is that true? Oh, well, you know, I joke about that. You know, you have the plumber doesn't show up for the three months that the kitchen is out of, is being renovated. Yeah. 
and I can visualize it. <laughs> <laughs> Being bludgeoned over the Being head with a lead pipe. Oh, <laughs> no, I joke about the fact you can get all your meanness out, you know, in the, sure. by murdering a few people, <laughs> you know. In print, in print. In print, purely in print. May Mary Higgins Clark rest in peace. She was so kind and good to me for so many years and a supporter of my work. So God bless her and may she rest in peace.